Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. So in the last tutorial we've created this little main idea, main loop of a nighttime slash forest sidetrance track and it sounds like this. And today I want to start adding more elements to this main loop so we can actually start creating a track. And one of the first elements I want to add is an atmosphere because atmospheres are really fun to make. Like you can get extremely creative while making them. And when I say extremely creative, like you can literally sample anything and make an atmosphere out of it. And when I say anything, like you can literally sample pasta you know, for example, and make an atmosphere out of it. And actually today, we're doing just so. We're creating some atmospheres out of me making pasta. Check this out. So yeah, I've sampled myself making pasta and today I want to show you how we can mangle these samples to make like mind melting atmospheres, you know, out of them. And this is actually one of the things that no one told me I can do when I've started making music. Like they actually people were telling me, no, atmospheres are really hard to make, but actually no, they're really fun to make. So uh, yeah. Before we dive into this tutorial, if you'd like to support the channel, you can consider becoming one of my patrons or buy my presets on Gumroad or just leave a like, comment and subscribe. Things like that helps the channel a lot. So here are the samples that I've created. I'm not going to go through every sample, but they will be available for my Patreon. I'll be actually using this one, the 43, where it's just me chopping some garlic, sound like this. What I'll do, I'll add an instrument track in here and I'll load Bitwig's sampler. I'll throw the sample in the sampler and I'll delete this channel. I'll take off the velocity sensitivity in here. Let me close this one, give it some volume. Now we have this. I'm going to set the root node to G sharp one because we're in the key of D sharp and I'll take off the key tracking. So now we have this. Perfect. I want to focus on this little part. So what I'm going to do, I'll set the in point somewhere here and the output somewhere here. And I want it to loop. So I'll set the looping to forward and backward. And let me set the looping points. Okay, now I'll set the play mode in here to cycles. I set the speed to really slow, somewhere like, yeah, 14% should be good. Now we have this. We already have something really nice going on here. Like, it's me chopping some garlic, but we have something like a violin. This is what's really nice about samples. So, now that we have this, what I'm going to do, I'll add a tool. With the tool, I'm going to make the sample actually mono because I want to add stereo depth later on, but something that I will actually control. I don't want it to be, you know, controlled by how I've recorded the sample, if that makes sense. Now, I want to add tone to the sample, something that I can control, you know, a tone I can control. And there's several ways to do that. One of them is by actually adding a resonator bank. Now, I know that Bitwig has one, Ableton has one. If other DAWs, I'm not sure they have one. If your DAW doesn't have one, you can recreate a resonator bank by literally adding an equalizer, just like so. And with the equalizer, you'll create bands really steep, just like so, like you can create 
how many bands that you would like, just like so. And each band, you will tune it to the frequency that you would like. Like, for example, in here we're in D sharp, so you can tune everyone to D sharp. For example, the first one would be D sharp zero, the second one would be D sharp one, D sharp three, etc., etc. So, this is in a nutshell how you can do it. Actually, Venus Theory made a really nice video about it. I'll leave a link to that in the description. So, what I'm going to do in here, just like with the EQ, I'm going to tune each of these resonances to D sharp. Control left click on the knob in here, and I'm going to set it to D sharp 2. Pretty nice. And these resonances in here, I'll set them to almost the same value for everyone. And here we have the gain. I'm going to set the gain to basically zero for everyone. Okay, so now we should have something that sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, pretty cool. So now I want to give movement to the sound. What I'm going to do, I'll modulate all of these frequencies together via this knob. And what I'm going to do, I'll just add a random modulator from Bitwig in here. I'm going to set it to sample and glide and I'll set it to something slow, like maybe half a note or maybe even a bar. I'll set it to modulate bipolar fashion and make it modulate up to let's say 24 semitones and now we have something that sounds like this pretty nice right now i want to mangle this even more so one way to do it is by adding ring mods. Ring mods are really underrated, but they can create some really, really nice tones. So I'm going to add a ring mod from Bitwig. And one way actually to add a really nice ring mod if you don't use Bitwig is to actually add Serum FX, basically Serum in effect mode. And you can actually add a filter in here and set it to mask. And we had a ring mod in here you'll basically get almost the same results. So I'm going to use the one that comes with Bitwig in here. I'll set the mix to 100%. And see, we have an oscillator in here, internal oscillator that can go from 0.1 hertz to 10 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to modulate this oscillator's frequency in here. So now we have this. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to modulate it all the way to 10 kilohertz because then we just have like really high resonances. I don't want that, but I'm, I want it like maybe up to 4K maybe. Yeah, 4K maximum. Because I want to get more of this beating feeling that the ring mod actually adds. So I'm going to add a random modulator. I'll set it to sample and glide again. I'll set it something slow, one bar. And yeah, let's make it modulate this oscillator's frequency. Now we have this. <laughs> Now let's give it even more character with a pitch shifter. So I'm going to just add a pitch shifter like so. Let me close this ring mod in here and I'm going to play with the pitch shifting just like so. <laughs> And I'll set the grain to something really small. Really cool. Now we're getting like these really weird kind of granular feeling to it. So what I'm going to do, I'll actually add a simple LFO in here. This LFO, let's take a classic LFO. This LFO will modulate the pitch of the pitch shifter all the way up 12 semitones just like so I'll set it to triangle because I really love triangle LFOs more than sine as LFOs 
I'll set the LFO to sync and I'll set it to two bars. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to modulate the grain, but this time with, you guessed it, a random modulator. So I'll set the random modulator to sample and glide and let it modulate something like this. I'll set it to something slow. Half a note should be good. Now we have this. Really nice. We're already getting some really weird stuff going on. Now the sound has a lot of dynamics. It's going really high in volume, then really low in volume. So what I'm going to do, I'll control that with a limiter. Now there's a lot of ways to control it. Uh, the simplest and easiest way to control it is by having a limiter. So I'll just load a limiter in here. Peak limiter from Bitwig. And I'm going to set the release to something fast. And I'll just squash it. Like at this point, we don't care that much about dynamics. Like we, we have to leave some, but... We can squash things, there's no problem in that. Pretty cool. So now we're controlling these dynamics and I want to give it more of a granular feeling to it. Now there's several ways to do it. I've actually created a granular device for Bitwig. I've made it solely on that. I'll leave a link to that right in here and in the description. So I'm going to add FX Grid so now we have this. Now, one way to make this device more interesting is by actually adding a macro in here. And this macro will control the clocks of these recorders. So I'll just set it to control the clocks, just like so. I really don't want the clocks to go slower than 3 hertz. I actually want them to go faster. You'll see why in a bit. And I'll add a control in here for the rate. Perfect. So now, if I'll play with this rate, check what we will get. With a higher rate, we will get actually more grains because the clocks will be ticking well faster, so we'll get more, we'll get a faster recording and play messages going to these recorders. So I'll leave it just like so. And one of the plugins that I really think shines when it comes to these kind of effects is the EFX Fragments from Arturia. This granular engine does wonders on the signal and I have this like really simple template that I've created for myself. And when I'll add it to these kind of sounds, check what you will get. <laughs> We'll get some really weird results out of it, you know? And by the way, before I forget, before these granular effects, I want to add a delay. And this delay, I'll set it really fast. I'll set it to one in here. I'll set it to stereo delay. Let's make some feedback. And it, it'll just give us this really fast repetition. It's, I don't know, like for me, this is something that is really related to Psytrance and it gives it like an instant psychedelic feel, if that makes sense. Like, check this out. <laughs> Instant psychedelic feel, and if I'll rework with the EFX fragments, we'll get this. Or my device, we can we will get this. And now what I'm going to do, I'll finish up the sound with a classic dotted ping pong delay, just like so. And I'm going to write a really simple pattern here. One long legato D sharp note. Now we have this. Pretty cool. I'm going to add one 
tool in here just to give it a little bit more volume just like so maybe yeah, five decibels should be good okay less mix and less feedback on the delay and one eq to clear up these nasty lower frequencies as the usual and i'll take some of these higher frequencies too And now, with the kick and bass, check what we have. Pretty crazy, right? And now we can actually bounce the sample and redo exactly the same thing with it and get like even crazier. And yeah, this is literally making an atmosphere out of pasta making, if that makes sense. And yeah, with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. See you next time.